Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Steve Kinney. I'm an engineer and a producer. So recently I made a video about how to get a vocal like a pro. I take you from all the steps from the very beginning on what kind of gear you need to how to position the microphone, what kind of processing you might want to do. Now I think that that video is a prerequisite to this video since all of the underlying principles in that video still apply to what we're going to look at in this video. So we're really not going to go over that again. So if you haven't watched that video, go check it out. Be sure to watch that video for things like processing and how to set a level for your vocal. This video is going to be entirely about dealing with a less than ideal environment for tracking vocals in and knowing what to do to still get really great results and a good vocal that's going to sit nice in a mix. So we're going to break this down into three general areas. We're going to talk about identifying what you're working with. We're going to talk about an engineer's perspective on this. And then we're also going to talk about software fixes and things that you can do in post-production. Now timestamps are available for this video as well. So Feel free to jump around. All I ask is that you like the video, leave a comment below, let me know your thoughts, and subscribe to the channel for more. All right, so let's dive right into it. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is identifying the problem, identifying what you're working with. Is it noisy neighbors? Or is it a really reverberant room? Or does the room just sound bad in general? If it's noisy neighbors, you're gonna to wanna to move to a room that's as far away from them as possible. That's pretty obvious. The more internal of a room that you can find, if it's closer to being inside of your house, uh, that's gonna be the best room more than likely. Just be careful not to overuse the concept of a closet and please don't use a bathroom. That's gonna sound terrible. Now, if you're dealing with just a reverberant room and you could likely just treat that as much as you can, in either case, whatever room that you're gonna be tracking in, you are gonna wanna treat that as best you can as well. So irregardless, you should be treating that room. And there are some additional tools that you can use to take care of this as well. Now on the cheap, you can build your own sound panels. There's tons of resources on the internet on how to do this, and you can get them really cheap if you're really tight on your budget. Now the next thing that you can do if you can't really treat your room all too well, you can try using a reflection filter. A reflection filter is gonna stop your voice from traveling and try to absorb as much of that frequency as possible. There's tons of really affordable options out there now, which you can find on Amazon or Sweetwater. I like the Aston Halo, however, I'm really careful not to put the mic too far back inside of the Aston Halo because sometimes it'll reflect some frequencies causing standing waves or weird resonances in the vocal take. And then of course, if you have a massive budget, if budget's not a problem, you can go hog wild and even build a portable isolation booth. Although I wouldn't really call these uh, portable, at least not entirely portable. Okay, so now let's talk about the engineering perspective. But first, before we go any further, if you're new to the Apollo platform, I've just recently released my console classics packs and heritage classics packs, which are available on my website. It's the quickest way to get production ready sounds and get really creative starting points for your productions just with a click of a button. It's also a really great way to learn traditional signal flows from studios everywhere. And finally, it's an amazing way to support the channel so I can keep making content like this for you guys at home. Okay, so when I put my engineering hat on and really try to tackle this problem from that perspective, the best thing that you can do that so many people will just skip right over in their explanation on how to tackle this problem is choosing a microphone. So while condensers are absolutely fantastic at getting that larger than life vocal sound, in the wrong setting, they can be a horrible microphone to use. Today's gonna be the day that they're gonna throw it back to you. By now, I should have somehow realized what you gotta do. I found that in really noisy environments, microphones like the SM7B and the RE20 shine so bright. Today's gonna be the day that they're gonna throw it back to you. By now, I should have somehow realized what you gotta do. They really are just workhorses. Their off access rejection is probably some of the best that I've ever used, which really helps in getting you a clean, tight, focused vocal sound. So to get something like the SM7B sounding really awesome, I love to use the UAD Neve 88 RS plugin. It has this really smooth top end character when you really boost the heck out of it, which I just think is awesome. So you get that really nice shine and sparkle to your vocal without it sounding too harsh. Combine this with the built-in noise gate and you can start to get a lot of really good effects from it. Which brings me to my final point. The third thing to consider is using software as your best friend here. So in the world of DAWs, we have again, pretty much unlimited resources these days. So in addition to choosing the right microphone, you can take it one step further by 
chopping out dead noise everywhere that you can. So what you would do is after the singer sings every phrase, each phrase, now not every word, but every phrase for the most part, you're gonna cut out that little in-between part where they start to take a breath or if they stop singing, just cut it and fade it. Control. I am on fire, fire. Burning up with desire. I got smoke in my eyes Cause you make it so hot You send off sirens Now I know that this is a lot of extra work But again, this is how you're gonna get that next level result Out of the not so next level room And lastly, the next thing that you can do Is use software programs or audio restoration programs. And I really think that this is a must have in this kind of situation. Now recently I just did a video on the C-Suite Vox plugin from UAD and Cedar Audio, which will be linked at the end of the video. So make sure you check it out. I think that that plugin is absolutely phenomenal and is going to be a game changer in those less than ideal environments. It can really help deal with those room resonances and that background echo that you get from your bad room. So if you're using that plugin, what you're gonna wanna do is put it just after your mic pre. I haven't tried it with uh, tuning, so I'm not sure exactly how you'd wanna put that in the chain, but just kind of experiment to see what the best result is. It's either gonna come before tuning or after tuning, so uh, give it a shot. And maybe let me know down in the comments which way you get the best result. All right, so these are the three main areas of focus to think about when you're tracking your vocal in a less than ideal room. And again, this is kind of a shorter video for you guys here, but I thought it was very important and I definitely wanted to touch on the subject. So if you guys have enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, leave a comment below, and subscribe to my channel for more. If you'd like to work with me directly, you can reach out to me on Instagram at the Steve Kinney. And to support the channel further, check out my console classics and heritage classics packs. It's the quickest way to get production ready sounds just with a click of a button. And again, it'll help you learn really creative ways to get the most from your Apollo. So thanks so much for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video.